Welcome to the Happiness First Radio Show, where you learn to consciously create the life you want. Your host, Lorraine Gordon, an expert in law of attraction and present moment awareness, along with her expert guests, give you the tools you need to focus your attention and thoughts to create your best life. And now, here's your host, Lorraine Gordon. Welcome to Your Happiness Way Radio with me, your host and online coach, Lorraine Gordon. And if you're a regular listener, then you know that the information and the guests that I bring you is to help you create a happier and a more love-filled life, a more abundant life in every way, including material success. You may know that I absolutely love material abundance. I believe in it, and I've had it, and so have my clients. But I do teach you that those things alone will not bring you happiness, and that's why I say happiness first, riches will follow. I want to thank all of you for continually tuning in. You have helped to keep this show in the top 10% of its genre, and I know your time is valuable, so I thank you for spending it with me. Today, I'm really excited to bring you a man by the name of Dr. Charles Glassman, and he's a leader in the field of mind-body medicine, and he will be bringing you valuable information in regard to stress and how it affects us in every way, every day. Dr. Charles Glassman has practiced internal medicine for over 25 years. And over this time, he's observed that many medical problems and physical symptoms arise from our ability to manage the challenges of everyday life. His focus is how stress interferes with that ability to obtain optimal holistic health, balancing mind, body, and spirit. And his first book, The Award-Winning Brain Drain, is a handbook on how to overcome common roadblocks to success and a joyful, deeply meaningful life. Seeing that his practice was evolving into a holistic one, he began calling himself Coach MD. And as Coach MD, his internet and social media presence has grown to over 160,000 fans on Facebook alone with a global reach of over 6 million. He truly is an expert, and with that, I believe that he is waiting in the studio. Dr. Glassman? Hey, yeah, Lorraine. How are you doing today? I am great. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. It's, I'm thrilled to have you. So, so this is a very interesting story. You were really uh, strictly an MD, right? Or did you have mm-hmm. some interest in, in this type of thing? Well, I, I've, always, I've always been somebody who's wondered about you know, kind of why we're, why we're here and what we're supposed to do while we're here throughout my whole life. And I, I got a... I was, educated conventionally, got my conventional medical doctor. But I have to tell you that during medical school, four years of medical school, the most impactful lecture that I had was one afternoon, probably about an hour long, and that lecture was told the story about a cardiologist researcher who went to the Himalayas to study the monks of the Himalayas. And in his studies, he found that those monks were able to control their automatic body parts or their automatic body systems simply with focus and intention. Mm. And they were able to do that without any type of outside effects, any medications, any drugs, anything, just with their focus and intention. They were able to lower their heart rate. They were able to... To control their body temperature. They were even able to decrease their need for oxygen and were in an oxygen deprived environment, one or two of them, for several days without requiring any type of oxygen or food and they were able to decrease their metabolism. Now, to me, that was the most impactful lecture. But of course, I went on my career, I I did my internship and residency, I went through my practice and uh, joined a practice and became a regular just general doctor but during that time 
it really became very stressful for me because I really wasn't I, I, I was helping a lot of people no doubt but I wasn't really fulfilling what I felt was my purpose and my ability to really help people authentically and so about 12 years ago I transitioned my practice into a much more personal one and it it grew. It allowed me to look into these other areas and to really help people in all aspects of their life, which I felt were, was affecting their overall health. So, do you still have? If I were to go to your office, would it look like a, a regular, you know, MD type of office, or would it look more like a psychiatrist type office? No, it would. It would actually look like a regular, regular doctor's office. But since my practice has has op- has become more open meaning open-minded, where my patients know that they can come to me for everything. A lot of the visits take place in my consultation room, my Mm -hmm. office, where my Mm -hmm. desk is, where I sit, where they sit. And a lot of it will take place there rather than a traditional exam room. Although if somebody comes in and has an acute illness, is sick, I can, of course, take care of those things as well. Are you, uh, and so what percentage of your practice is devoted to coaching versus the, the uh, you know, allopathic type of medicine? Mm-hmm. I, I would say it's probably at this point, well, uh, you know, it's hard to say because my patients will, they, I say maybe 50-50 because mm-hmm. even those patients who are getting allopathic care are coming to me for other things as well. So you sort of set up. Challenges. You kind of set up like a program. Uh, you discover what the problems you feel the problems are based on their physical and their mental and their emotional sort of well-being. And exactly. I yes. see. That really very does, individual. Very individualized. Yes. That sounds fantastic. I'm sorry you're not in my town. Right. <laughs> it really does sound great. I think you yeah. know everyone. Uh, most of us that are in uh, into the metaphysical world uh, would love to find an MD who had your kind of background. Because even if mm-hmm. we find a holistic or a type of, of MD, um, they may not be quite as well-rounded with the, uh, you know, the other side of the medicine. So right. since, you know, I do want to ask you a question. It, sure. Do you believe that somebody can be physically robust and healthy if they don't have the rest of themselves, if they're, if they're not balanced in, in spiritually and, and emotionally? Not really, no. You don't? I, I don't, no. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, well, let, let's put it this way. Somebody could be physically fit that's the, and, and could be completely detached from any type, can be fully grounded in the physical world, which you know, I, I, I do a lot of writing about that. And, and so I, I shouldn't say that. So somebody can be physically fit, but if we're talking about holistic fitness, if we're talking about holistic uh, Wellness. If we're talking about holistic life satisfaction, then I do not believe that because I've known a lot of people who may be physically fit but really are not connected with anything, anything to, uh, to consider their life purpose or, or to have their life more meaningful. Same goes with somebody who might be financially uh, successful or have a lot of financial resources um, and they may be very financially fit. They may even be very physically fit. But if you look at their lives and if they're honest with you and if you have time to sit down with them, and I tell people this all the time when they come to me thinking they're the only person with so certain challenges, I tell them, don't, don't look at other people on the street because those people are coming into me when you're not here, okay? And they're opening up to me when you're not here. So uh, you can't really judge other people from afar, but what... What I say is that in order to be truly, to have true wellness, true wellness has to be a balance of mind, body, and spirit, and they have to be equally balanced, and as far as I'm concerned. And don't you think the same holds true for happiness? I mean, can you really be happy? if, Let's say a person's grounded, and of course that's my business, but let's say a person's grounded in the physical, and they mm-hmm. look great, you know, they're yep. very into their body, and their body's, you know, moving along quite beautifully, yep. and they've got lots of money in the bank. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really have all that much to do with their emotional level of happiness, does it? Correct, yeah, and... You know, it's hard to, to tell somebody there really has to be an individual decision and an individual, uh, I guess, revelation for somebody to say that, look, I'm really not 
happy. I really don't have this meaning because I know people who, a couple people come to mind who I've met over the years who seem as though they're the most happy-go-lucky people in the world. Nothing phases them. They're very well-to-do. They, they have seemingly great relationships. But I can, you know, I, 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 can see, I can see the imbalance and I can, when I have a chance to sit down and talk with them. But it has to come from the person and it has to come from uh, inside. They have to kind of bubble over to admit it to themselves, which is very difficult. I, I was going to say that. I think so So many of that type of person uh, doesn't even realize themselves. Correct, yes. And, and often they're filling that void with the drive for material things or physical perfection, which, of, as you know, is sort of a... Uh, it's not going to happen. As soon as we get perfect, we begin to age anyway. So <laughs> Right, exactly. Yes, that's for sure. Time better spent elsewhere. If yes. it's in, <laughs> right. So you do say that the challenges of everyday life are mm. why people get sick and keep them sick. Is, yeah. is that what you mean by the mind-body connection? Absolutely. And, and really, those challenges are generally financial, money, health, and relationships. Those are really the big three. And those challenges are, are when, I, when someone comes to me with, with an issue, it's usually the challenge has to do with one of those segments. And those segments get, get, can get you very sick. A, a woman comes to mind who came into my office last week, and I've known this woman for many years, over 20 years. She's always had kind of a chip on her shoulder. She's always been irritable and never really connected with her on, on a great level. And my staff, never really that friendly. Before she retired, uh, when I had a, a busier practice, and I, I used to see employees that she used to manage, and they used to always complain about their boss until I found out it was her. And as I got to know her, I, I, know, I, you know, I knew why. Uh, although over the last year or so, she's come in periodically and we've talked a little bit more deeply and not quite coaching her because she really wasn't open to that. And she came in last week and there was something about her really that was different. And maybe it was because she went with a girlfriend to Florida for two months, came back kind of with a, a nice color to her face and she seemed as though uh, she didn't have – wasn't as edgy as usual. And we began talking – and she was saying how her grandson, how uh, she's really, and again, this falls in the relationship uh, part, what I'm talking about, challenges, saying how her grandson, how she gave her grandson all this money to go the, to the special summer program, and the summer program really propelled him to be able to get uh, admission to a very good school with, with scholarship money, and now her grandson doesn't want to have anything to do with her, Aww. and Painful. just goes through, you know, he just wants to talk to his estranged father who doesn't give him anything. And she was complaining and says, you know, it really kind of makes me sick. And I said, I'll call her Mary. I go, Mary, you have to understand. And one thing is very important. And one thing that I hold true to my life and how I, what I write about is that when we give with expectation, when we give with no, when, when we give with no expectation, we receive without limitation. But when we give with strings attached, it always has the ability to create – it becomes like a business deal. Mm -hmm. It's not – it's a loan. It's a business deal. It's not true giving. So I, and she's, she kind of laughed and she goes, yeah, you know what? I always give with strings attached. This woman who had no insight for so many years all of a sudden was able to admit that and she kind of was laughing at it saying, yeah, how silly is that? Wow. I always give with – it was an epiphany. And then, then we started talking about – um, you know, how we can be overbearing and she kind of enters, she laughs, she goes, yeah, and I'm really overbearing. And she, she, she kind of knows herself, or at least she knew, did once you talk. Well, exactly. She started opening up. And so my point is that it takes a lot and it takes a lot sometimes to admit this to yourself. And this woman is in her mid-70s, so it's never, too, it's never too late. And even her family told her lately, she shared this with me, that they've noticed a change in her. So it doesn't, doesn't matter how old you are. When, when you realize that there are certain blocks that we all have 
and that these blocks are simple ways to our brain uses to protect us. Once you understand that, then you can rise above it, and then you can dis- discover your true gifts, which is your divine nature, which exists in all of us. And even at 75, she's just beginning to realize that. But it's not too late while she's still on this earth. Mm, I hope she's. I ho- does she realize that you have helped to affect that change? Or- well, you know what? Uh, I think she does. You know, I don't need. She didn't say it to me, and I don't really need her to say it to me because I kind of know it because. We've never really talked on – well, we've talked on – I've tried to get her uh, through some tough times that she's had with her family actually over the last two years. But it's never been a time when she's actually realized that some of the issues really fall on her shoulders and her behaviors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because as a teacher of manifestation techniques, um, one of the things that my my coaching clients have the hardest time doing initially is to take responsibility for what has so far shown up in their life, you know, as a as law of attraction. But yes. truly, until you take responsibility, you don't even understand your own power. I think by taking responsibility of maybe um, the things that you might look at as negative, in her case, the the sort of unhappy relationships creates so much power within her to turn that around. Yes, and what's very funny, Lorraine, is that it's not funny. It's kind of a, a social experiment that my, um, I, I've i built up my social media platform pretty large, and now uh, I have, I think it's over 172,000 on Facebook. And I will tell you, in most of the large pages who I also share and we communicate will tell you that most of our popular posts, the ones that go tend to go viral, tend to be the ones that uh, are the are the ones that kind of point things at other people. So the the ones that say uh, things that though mm. you know I don't need toxic people in my life and I'll go move on and find those people who uh, who elevate me or something like that. All we you know kind of. You know, which is an okay idea. Obviously, you want to surround yourself with people who don't take you down and ele- and who elevate you. However, the ones that point kind of the blame on others in the post tend to do the best, and that's because it's very easy to look at somebody else and to kind of project what's going wrong in your life on the fact that other people are dragging you down than it is to say, you know. There are certain parts of me that I see are holding me back, and that that doesn't. You know, I had a post today, which is is becoming pretty popular. That is is called the elimination diet, and basically it says remove. Uh, I can't. I'll try to remember all of them. Remove regret, resentment, guilt, uh, blame, a uh, couple other things from your diet, and see your health improve and your life, or, or see your health and your life improve. And, you know, that's more of a well, it's, introspective... It's very different. Yes. I see that as so different because I think we might even be talking about some of this. You might be talking about some pages that I actually I am kind of incredulous when I look at coaches, mm-hmm. one particular that is often posting like, th- uh, like that, blaming, um, mm-hmm. uh, victimized kinds of posts. Yes. Um, and it is truly not... Uh, a positive way to get across the message. I mean, it no. really is saying, hey, I'm a victim of circumstances when my teaching, and I can tell yours as well, mm. is that no, we are we are not a victim. It's really up to us, particularly yes. once you have your basic needs met. Uh, absolutely. You know, the, base, the best medicine that I could help somebody take is to develop a positive inner strength, a positive attitude, a positive... Uh, awareness and consciousness that's the best medicine Mm. that I could give anyone and that will make people healthy who felt that they can never be healthy that'll make people uh, vital and have incredible vitality who who never thought they could ever dream of that that will help people make the ordinary extraordinary in their life and and that's the meta that's the best medicine that I've seen over the years it, it really, it, 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 it the, probably the most difficult part of my profession right now, my career as a doctor, 
is having to pretend when somebody I know is struggling with challenges who just won't admit it and who just say, no, I'm a diabetic, no, I'm a hypertensive, mm. no, I'm a cancer patient. Mm. When they're defining, they're saying, I am this right. and I am that when I know that they're much more than that. And that's the most frustrating thing for me because they're demanding a pill, which I know it will just put a Band-Aid over it, and they're, they're just not getting to their true divine strength, which is in them, which could heal immensely and could also, as you talk about, attract great things into their life. It's so true, but I, then, you know, part of me goes to, uh, well, first of all, I love the way you're talking as an MD. It's really fabulous, may I say, Dr. Glassman. <laughs> but, Thank you. but the other part of me says, you know, uh, that we all have our own particular evolutionary time. Mm-hmm. And sometimes... Um, what I have to do, and I guess you do too, is just honor where they're at and say, okay, this is what they must need at this particular time and place, and so I'm just going to sort of be there for them in the capacity that, that I can help in whatever way I can. And it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I do practice compassion. Obviously, and, yes. You know, one, one of the things that I, I, this is kind of the running joke in my family, I say to my wife, that I have an entire family that she has no idea exists, that she doesn't know. Does that make her jealous? An entire other family, (laughs) right? And that other family are my patients. Yes. And, you know, who I love and I hug and I commiserate with and I cry with. And and, yesterday I went to a a wake, you know, the, the... of, of one of my dear patients who passed away and, and I he was 81 and his twin sister was there who was going to be there he would have been 82 next week and she's going to be 82 next week and I gave her a hug and I said that she was surprised that I was there and I said how, how could I not come to a family member's wake right <laughs> you know and it, it's yeah, that's how I feel it's gratifying and, isn't it you sound yeah. you sound very in love with your practice and your patients and yes. isn't that the secret of your well-being and your happiness? Absolutely. It's, it's a big part of it. Yes. Huge. So huge. And, and you talked about this at the beginning of the show. You talked about deeper meaning to life. Mm-hmm. That was the very first thing you said. People yeah. ha- needing that deeper meaning in their life. Yes. Which is pretty interesting. Yes. And I, I really try to help people understand that you know, you were talking in, in your work, and you talked about financial wealth and 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 how to achieve it happily, and how to sit with it, and and to be content, and to be fully content. And you, in order to be fully spiritual, you have to have both feet grounded in the real world, because this is the only world we know. True. This is the world that we're grounded in. This is the world we are. Whether you. You know, whether you, you know, we don't really know why we're here, really, if you are actually honest with oneself, you will say, "Where really, where do we come from? Why are we here? And that goes for the most conventionally religious person on the earth. When you're in your quietest moments, I know there is a question. And I know that that, that question is really, what am I doing here? And that, right. that question, especially as people get older and start to approach death, is a question that really gives them a lot of anxiety and I do try to help people understand that no matter where you are in life everyone has certain gifts and talents and uh, innate abilities skill sets that everyone has at least one and when you discover that and you work in alignment with that then that is the first step into developing real true health and wellness and I feel that that it, it's that I'm obligated to talk like that to my patients and to work with them to try to discover that. I, I think, as a doctor, I would be remiss not talking about that if they're ready to, and if they're not, as you said, I respect that as well. Right, right. Well, it's so obvious that you are very comfortable and aware of your purpose, and I think you know um, when you wake up every day and you you have that purpose, you are eager to face the day. Work isn't a chore. It's something you do because you want to do it. You're sort of compelled because it's it's your purpose. It's your uni- It's the reason you're here, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And, and I really work very hard to practice what I preach. It's 
very difficult for that's, me. That's the rub, though, isn't it? You kind of yes. have to be an example. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? I, I, can't, I, I can't be – I cannot – I cannot be inauthentic or not genuine. I, I, for me to write about what I write about, to talk to people, I, I can only be honest and sincere because I, I see just too much out there where I know it's just a lot of words and it's not going to help people if they if they don't know that there cha- there are going to be challenges all along the way if they really aren't ready for that then when you talk about the law of attraction, they get very, very, first of all, it can hurt them because they can do things that can really sabotage them. And second second of all, they stop believing after a while and they start losing faith. Ah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's very, that, that, the loss of faith, uh, when you take that out, that, because, that can mean death, can't it? Yes, absolutely, yeah. and mm-hmm. illness and sickness. Yeah, and which pre- all precedes of death very yes, often. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Often. You know, I have, um, I, I, what do you think about the light within the body, the actual light, the energetic light in the body? Because I have had doctors on the show that talk about there being studies showing that there is light in the body and that mm-hmm. it dims as we sicken and die. Well, you know, honestly, I don't know that much about that honestly but what I do know is that when I meditate every day I communicate with my inner guidance and to Mm -hmm. me that inner guidance is the light and Mm -hmm. I've done a couple of videos and one is available on my website uh, that you know someone could it's called we all do I have this a, a tab on my website which says inspirational videos and I have about 10 inspirational videos and The first one is called We All Do It, where I talk about that inner light. And I just created a new one that I put out a couple months ago that when people opt into my email, they join my email list, they get that one. It's called The Voice. And I talk about that inner voice, that inner guidance, which to me is a light because it it comes to me uh, sometimes as a light, comes to me as a presence. And I feel that very strongly. And that's not because I'm some type of psychic or channeler or I'm, so, I'm more special than, than anybody else, that I'm some type of uh, whatever, super being. No, I'm just like anybody else and every single human being has that in them. And that's what the, the videos that I created, really the, the purpose for those is to help people understand that you know, oh, they say, oh, you know, Dr. Charles, Dr. Glassman, you know, you're, you're a doctor, you haven't made, you don't know the trouble and the challenges that I'm going through. You don't know, you could talk about the inner light and how you talk to your inner guidance. How am I ever going to do that? And I've heard all that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that, yes, you do have that in you. And you have to get past all those objections and all those blocks that come from your primitive nature to allow yourself to explore and discover your divine nature. So if that's the light, I would say it exists and it's very bright and blinding in a good way. Isn't that? That's very, very insightful. You know, and I want to talk to you about something that you mentioned called the automatic brain. We're just going to have to hold for a moment because I want to uh, bring on my sponsors and we'll be right back with Dr. Charles Glassman and his take on something he calls the automatic break. Just a moment. Have you ever imagined a life without worries, fears, and problems? What if I told you that you no longer had to live like that? Changes are possible for you through my teachings and affirmations, CDs, DVDs, and apps. Through our book, Peace in the Present Moment, Eckhart Tolle, Byron Katie, and I can show you how living in the present moment will change your life. Visit my website, peaceinthepresentmoment.net, and get inspired on my Facebook page of over 73,000 likes. The power of the I am is yours at loaaffirmations.com. Bringing you the very best in audio affirmations programs and introducing our newest title, I Am Happy, Healthy, and Wealthy. 
All of the LOAaffirmations.com programs are MP3 instant downloads and come with multiple audio and subliminal tracks. Order yours today at LOAaffirmations.com. All right, back again with Coach MD, Dr. Charles Glassman, and he has been enlightening us with mind-body medicine and the way he approaches it. And Dr. Glassman is a, an expert in that field and has some books out there to prove it. And, and he's also giving some free gifts uh, in terms of videos and something he talks about called The Voice. And there will be links right here on the listening page where you can just click on it and go ahead and obtain those gifts of Dr. Glassman. And so once again, we were talking about something you call the automatic brain or the primitive brain. Can you explain that? Yes, and in fact, Lorraine, you made a a little bit of a Freudian slip, which is, was perfect. <laughs> you called it the automatic break right before the break, and that. But I have to tell you that that is perfect because it really is a break. The automatic yeah. brain. We we if you look to humanity, uh, Homo sapiens have been on this earth for about two hundred fifty thousand years. Uh, evolutionary speaking, evolutionary wise, and this this brain predates even our prehistoric ancestors. But this brain has evolved in Homo sapiens, which we are, to do only one thing, and that's to protect us from danger. Right. And it has become an automatic brain where it just reacts to anything that our brain picks up as danger. And the only two responses that it causes us to act, to do, to behave with, the only two behaviors it causes us to do is fight or flight. Mm. So if the brain, this automatic brain, picks up anything that it processes to be as dangerous, it will react instantaneously, automatically, without thought, and it will cause us to fight or flight. I'll, I'll mention something about the thought aspect in, in a second, but it's truly without thought. It's a reaction. And just because you have thoughts doesn't mean this is a thinking brain, which mm. I'll explain in a second. Isn't this the reptilian brain? Okay. This part of it is a reptilian brain. Mm -hmm. But rep reptiles are, are inferior creatures. Okay, They don't have an evolved advanced frontal cortex. Right. The frontal cortex really makes us humans, homo sapiens, separate from animals. And what that frontal cortex, the only thing that that frontal cortex has done, it's enabled us to be more sophisticated in our fight or flight. It's enabled us to be more sophisticated mm. in the way this brain protects us from danger. However, it doesn't change the fact that this is a primitive brain that only reacts. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you start going after something and really pushing out of your comfort zone and you feel like you're going to go for it, but all of a sudden you hear, Lorraine, wait a <laughs> second. You can't be doing that. You don't you don't have enough talent to do that. You don't you're you're not good enough for that. You didn't do that in high school. What about the you know the the test that you failed in high school? Yeah, Lorraine, you better back off. Okay, so what is that? Okay? <laughs> you sounded it, if you didn't have a manly <laughs> voice like you do, you would have sounded just like my mother. <laughs> right, there you go. Well, let me tell you something. Overprotective parent is what this automatic brain is. It is an overprotective parent that is only looking to protect you, but the thoughts, it, it will do whatever it takes by all means necessary to protect you from danger, threat, or vulnerability. So it will generate thoughts that could be crazy and, and certifiably insane, but it knows what it will take to bring you back to safety. Mm. Now, most of the time, I'd say very often, it is you're not in any da real danger. It is your life experience, what you've learned to be dangerous. And so I'll give you an example of a, uh, when I talk about the thoughts, because this is a primitive brain automatic. And as you can see, it puts the brakes on things. Right. As, you, as you slipped and said mm -hmm. the automatic brake, it's, it's, 
it's beautiful that you said that because it really is. It's a break. It's the obstruction. It's everything that stands in your way of going and becoming the success that you can be. It's because it is this primitive brain that stores data from and the and the the formative years from childhood uh, during childhood from birth to adolescence when it stores the most data it teaches you it well let me it reinforces that that, right. that automatic reinf- behavior right correct mm-hmm. it will store the data that as, in your brain as a child that you will use as an adult to figure out when you're in danger and mm-hmm. how crazy is that mm-hmm. but that's what happens but there are other events that can happen in your life that don't even come to childhood and these are I'll give you an example there was a, a woman who came to my office a few years ago and she was really uh, very upset about this you know feel getting kind of these crazy thoughts and she knows she can come to me because I've shared with my patients my crazy thoughts <laughs> Good I mean, for you. <laughs> yeah I mean come on I, 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 I've told people when I'm on the on the road speeding down the highway and all of a sudden I get this crazy thought that I'm going to swerve and hit the guardrail or lose control and hit the, the tractor trailer in front of me or, 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 or somebody's at, you're at the top of a mountain and you have this vision that you're going to fling yourself off. That's what the fear of heights is mostly, is that these irrational thoughts that just pop in. Oh, or I, you're didn't holding, know. I didn't or, realize that. Or you're holding a baby and, and you're just going to fling. These are your brain's protective mechanisms to make you be on the lookout more to be safer. That's your frontal cortex in coordination with your automatic brain. Interesting. And, yes, and, and this is not, I'm not, honestly, I don't know, this is my theory, okay? I, I can't say I'm right or wrong. This is Charles, Dr. Charles Glassman, Coach MD's theory. I've never seen it written or talked about this way, but this is the way I see it. Okay. And just to use it as an example, I, this, as I was saying, this woman came into my office two years ago for these crazy thoughts that she was having. And what were the crazy thoughts? Well, she had these visions of putting her grandchild in an oven. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that horrible? Oh, it so, is. And I'm sure she was just appalled at herself. At, it was making her sick. I think it's pretty amazing that she could say that to you. You yes. really get a lot of trust from your from your patients. Oh, yes. That's absolutely. wild. That's because great. let me tell you, she tells that to any other doctor. They they send put her, her away. Yeah. They would they send her a psychiatrist. They yeah. put her on Zyprexa or an yeah. antipsychotic. Oh, they yeah. put her on on Valium. And or call Clonic and or, call the grandson. Tell him get away. Absolutely, <laughs> right. you got it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So we we you know I talked with her. I said, well, see, I know that those crazy thoughts never come out of the blue. They do not come. They there has to be a trigger, always, hundred percent of the time. So. Your audience, you're listening to this. If you get crazy thoughts, there's something your brain is trying to protect you from. Hmm. And it may not be obvious, may not be apparent. It may be something stupid that you really don't need. It, it may be that you're, um, I don't know, that you have a deadline to, to reach or something, or maybe even something even more ridiculous that, that you have to, uh, that, that you have a deadline to clean your house or whatever. Either you have in-laws coming over and your house has to be clean because if it's not clean, they're going to insult you or whatever. And, and your brain starts coming up with crazy thoughts. It's because you've been triggered. You're, there's something is making you feel endangered, threatened, or vulnerable. So what was bothering this lady? So since I knew something had to be triggering it, I asked her a little bit more. I said, well, what is it about you know, your relationship with your daughter? And she said, well, we were pretty estranged until recently and she started having children, her, her grandchildren, and now they have two, and they've asked us, my husband and I, to babysit and to be, and they, they seem as though they want to be more, they want to be closer to us. And I said, that seems very important to you, doesn't it? And she says, yes. She said, you know, but if, if I don't, if I'm not a good, you know, good grandmother, and I do something wrong, and, and the child gets hurt, then she's never going to want me to see me again. She, she'll blame me. She'll never want me to come back again. Right. So her brain, think about this, her brain was protecting her from taking care of the children. Oh, Be- oh because, because she wouldn't take the chance of maybe she, hurting the baby. Exactly. Because of her real fear of, exactly. of incurring her wrath of her daughter. Correct. 
And so Whoa, this is a this very... This is really interesting. Right. And see, this is how I come to... The, and when you ask me if I have a system, the system that I have <laughs> is trying to bring up to the level of awareness and consciousness just how this automatic primitive brain of ours works. Now, it would be very easy if we were... If I was dealing with cave-dwelling ancestors, or cave-dwelling, cave-dwelling ancestors, because they would say, well... Yeah, I'm afraid that I'm not going to get food to eat. I'm afraid that my right, the, it's much the, simpler, it's much simpler. Joe in the other cave is going to club me and take my, my wife, wife. And get, you know, or or is going my to come food. in and, and, and take my food while I'm sleeping. Whatever. I mean, uh-huh. it would be very simple, much uh-huh. more simple. But now we're highly evolved humans with this primitive brain, and so what I've done in my writing and my and thinking about this and looking into myself, I've come to the conclusion that we have three compartments to this primitive brain and it's important to understand to help people understand what are their dangers and what compartments are these dangers in so the three compartments are the the first one is what I call the one-up compartment and we learn the the, the one-up danger and we learn from an early age the data what is going to be one up from us what 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 who what people are going to be one up from from us and we learn that from our our home environment so if we learn in our home environment that rich people are one up from us then we're going to know that they may be dangerous to us and that we're either going to have to fight or flee them and mm-hmm. so that gets stored in our data banks and that and that goes to the next folder the unknown and unfamiliar folder so let's say you you're growing up and you're storing data that yelling and screaming and fighting that's the norm that's how people get along that or or abuse that's the norm that's the familiar so that's known to you well the unknown and the unfamiliar these are universal danger triggers okay one up is a universal one so we we innately know that things that are one up from us are going to be dangerous the unknown and unfamiliar it's innate that those are going to be dangerous to us and the loss of love okay so the unknown unfamiliar so if you have an abusive relationship that gets stored so a sane relationship a, a real communicative doesn't relationship feel good. Mm-hmm. doesn't feel good ah, okay mm-hmm. and so then you have the loss of love danger folder danger compartment and what that means is that you will do what we will do as humans whatever it takes to assure love because without love we can wither and die so people say that we're put on this earth to love I'll say that our primitive brain puts us on this earth not to lose love so we fight and flee not to lose love which actually causes more conflict than it does peace you mean even if that love came in an abusive setting and that's why that person would be attracted to continual abuse Absolutely. Or Bingo. or mates that stray, that drive them crazy, and it's ca- always the case. Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. so those are things that are stored. And for this woman, she was her brain was helping her fight and flee the possibility. She didn't want to lose her daughter's love. So the way she would assure that she wouldn't lose it is by taking st- by fleeing it by mm. staying away from the opportunity that might th- jeopardize that love it's it's nutty this brain doesn't think again it will generate thoughts but it's not really thinking it's reacting right and so that is the automatic break as you said mm-hmm. okay because it breaks us it prevents us from discovering something greater in ourselves and that is the automatic brain and that is primitive our primitive nature so interesting, and that's of course why the human condition has such a uh, a problem, for lack of a better words, with change of any kind. Yeah, it has it's to be universal. that primitive primitive brain. And yet, what I teach, and it's it, it's it's so obvious, is if you want something to be better or different in your life, change has to precede it. And often we stop or fear the very change that could be could be uh, breaking us into that new ground. Mm-hmm. It's kind of yes. crazy, isn't it? So it now that crazy. we figured out it's the primitive brain, and people are have these crazy thoughts and f- maybe even fears that mm-hmm. keep them from moving forward with their lives. How do you teach that a person recognize this and then overcome it, especially if it's an auto program? Yes. Well, this is the very importance of bringing bringing this automatic brain up to the level of awareness and consciousness because we have all of us has within us 
a divine nature. And this divine nature, I believe, is our mind is the gateway to this divine nature is our higher mind mm. our higher mind is different from the brain our higher mind mm. is reflective mm. our higher mind is assertive not aggressive or passive the, whereas the automatic brain aggression is the fight passive is the flight whereas the mind is always assertive the mind is assertive it's reflective it's peaceful it's loving it's caring, it's compassion, it's all-knowing. It's our gateway to our higher being. It's a gateway to our divine nature. It's our gateway, it's our conduit, it's our pathway to what I believe is God. And I believe that God is in us, all of us, and that when we have that light, as you said, and, and how I, I talk about it, that is a constant. That is always there. It's, it's about bringing up to the level of awareness and consciousness these, re, these reactions and not believing, trusting, and taking direction from them any longer and understanding once we know that they're not serving us, that light starts to, a glimmer mm -hmm. starts to, 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 to make its way in. Mm -hmm. And once you start seeing that inner light and once you start hearing that inner voice, and once you start trusting it, then nothing stops you. And the way I help people do that is a lot of times it's individual, and it, that's very time intensive. And what I'm going to do in the future is start having more webinars and more Google Hangouts where right. I can reach people. The on better a, use of your time, sure. The better use of my time, and also in my writing, my books, in my social media, that sort of thing where I can help people in, in that way. And once I can help people understand that this is not all there is, that's, that's the beginning. And then I can help people meditate where they can connect with their inner guidance. A, a great quote that I love says that when we pray, we talk to God. When we meditate, God talks to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I experience mm -hmm. that and I know everybody, everybody who's listening certainly and everybody in the world can achieve that. Right. And then there are certain things in, in in your life that you can do and, and, and different things that I, I talk about in my books and, and some of my uh, workbooks that that are good exercises to do. And I'll have links to your books, uh, you know, on the listening page as well so people can right. access, as well as your, your website, so people can access you. And, and it's Facebook Coach MD, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, I know. Facebook, I read. Yeah. I I uh, post a lot of the stuff that I see on your uh, on your Facebook. Very, you know, enlightening and ins well, inspirational. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank well, you. I appreciate you. <laughs> so you know, something interesting comes to mind. I talk. Uh, I was doing uh, actually a, a webinar the other day, and we talked about um, free will. Mm -hmm. And one of my mentors, Dr. Deepak Chopra, said in. Uh, a class that I'll never forget. You think you have free will, but you really don't. And I think he was talking about the primitive brain. Absolutely. In fact, the primitive brain really, in my talk about the automatic brain, what I've done is really, and I, look, people have talked about this con these kind of concepts in different ways, and, and I, I'm just looking at the way that works for me and the way that I see it and the way that resonates with me. But I feel as though I've put a physiologic explanation to what ego is because you can really replace the term automatic brain with ego mm. but when you understand that the ego really is a physiologic mechanism uh -huh. then that you understand that yes that is something that I probably can figure out and control before it was this kind of thing the ego does this and the ego does that and the ego is the blame for everything but I, I guess my inquisiting mind, I need to know what really is ego. And when I first uh, wrote my book, Brain Drain, I had a bunch of working titles. And one of the working titles was Ego versus Essence. Mm, <laughs> and then, then in the book, I called it The Automatic Brain of Ego. And I took it out afterwards because it sounded too clinical, sounded too psychological, and I, my book really is, is psychological, but it's much more of a mind-body-spirit exploration. Well, I kind of think it all sort of blends together. 
don't you? It does. Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah. yeah. Or it certainly can, you know. Oh, yeah, I, sure. I just want to ask you a question. You know, yes. I have, uh, we all have that aunt that's very fearful that says, you never know what they might do and sure. be careful about people and, you know, they could be crazy and, uh, you know, the, the person that's afraid at every turn. However, in listening, and 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 most of my life I've been rather a kind of fearless and i mm-hmm. and i believe i've never attracted anything I, I don't attract anything to be fearful from so mm-hmm. luckily i've had a lot of luck anyway um let's talk about that person whose primitive brain is enhanced based mm-hmm. on their childhood who sees nothing but violence who uh, learns that weapons are the way to get what you want mm-hmm. can that i mean many of those people are walking our streets mm-hmm well, let, let me just a couple things. Um, one is we all have an automatic primitive brain, and right. it's and and that's I do I still do you know I, I still do the work every single day <laughs> to keep work. your to keep your weapon hungry person at bay right <laughs> right right <laughs> inner yeah, person <laughs> I, right absolutely I I practice every day mm-hmm. and I'm I'm walking a path that will hopefully will. People can feel my divinity as I walk, and I'm not saying that it's my. It's everyone has that in them. So I want people to feel my divinity, and I want to walk a path of the divine rather than the path of my automatic brain. Now, certainly, there are people who are are so closed, and their divine nature is mm-hmm. so shut down right. that they're walking a path purely automatic brain, right. and. It, it, the reality is that our divine nature is not a passive nature. Our divine nature is not an aggressive nature. Our divine nature allows us to be assertive. And there are times when we have to defend ourselves mm-hmm. from the automatic brains of others. Yeah. And that's why when people talk about, and at the risk of sounding political here, okay, when people, when people talk about our military and they say that, oh, we should you know, defund the military and we should have kumbaya and peace on earth and everybody should love one another. That's okay if everybody on earth would recognize that they have a divine nature. Right. Then I, I, I would say yes. But the fact is that so many countries have an automatic brain mentality and so many people on this earth have an automatic brain where they have to protect themselves from the dangerous people out there, which they, they think we are, whether they're the non-believers or whether they're the uh, infidels or whether they're the uh, capitalists or whatever. And they're going to have to destroy and one-up those people. And we and, – and me personally, I have to be in a, in aware and I have to be assertive enough – to be able to protect myself, not to fight or flee, right? Okay, but to be assertive and reflect and make the right decisions so I can protect myself in a meaningful, purposeful, real way from those people who are automatic, from the automatic brains of others, basically. Dr. So Glassman, I think you should run for office. How's yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your politics sound pretty good to me. Right. You know, uh, yeah. we're just about finished here, but I want, before we, we do finish, I want to find out what, kind, what projects are you working on right now, because I'm sure the listening audience wants to, wants to hear. You've given us a lot of really useful, useful information. Great, but thanks. Yeah. What are yeah. we looking forward to? Yeah, well, I, I completed a manuscript last year, um, which is a real manuscript, uh, 350 pages, about 40 chapters, and it really goes in a lot more to the dynamic between the brain and the mind, our primitive nature, our divine nature, and I do have in that chapters that have to do with politics and religion and healthcare, actually, and that right now, I, I pitch that to about 47 agents and publishers in November and I've I got about nine rejections and the rest of them I didn't hear back from and I won't hear back from them and that's that's the nature of the business and I can't wait till I'm in a position I can talk a little bit more about the automatic brain of that business because um, it's it's really preventing people who really have something real very valuable to say it prevents them uh, from getting out there but anyway to uh, you know with that will you self-publish 
I self-published Brain Drain, and I, I, I am not going to self-publish this book be, for, for a lot of different reasons. Um, I will get it out there s- some way or another, but right now I am, I'm probably going to start working with a, an agent who is, is pretty reputable. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's come across in the last couple of weeks. We'll see what happens. If, if the timing, what I believe is this, truly, that if, if my intention, if people's intentions are, are sincere, are real, then so will be the success. Mm-hmm. So it will be at the right time. It will be in the right way. It will be in the right circumstance. The right people will come into my, uh, it will come to me. Right. This agent will be the agent if it's, if it's the time, if it's the right one. If it's not, then it, it, it won't be. My work will be there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I, I'm not in a rush. I have, uh, you know, my, I, I put a lot of time into my social media, building my platform. Um, you know, my reach has expanded greatly, and I, I really feel very honored, and I feel like, as though I have a great responsibility to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's mm-hmm. the message I get when I meditate. Mm-hmm. That's the, the, the strength I feel, and that's what drives me every day when I wake up. It's your purpose. It's so obvious. It's, yeah. Well, I want to thank you. I'm sorry. It, well, it took a long time between visits. It's probably been a little right. over a year, but I, I would love to have you back on uh, in the near future. You've, sure. you've added so much to what uh, to what this show is, is actually doing. So thank you so much, Dr. Glassman. Thank you for being with me. Well, thank you so much, Lorraine, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And for the rest of you, I know that you want to be happy and enjoy peace of mind. And I promise you that you can be, and you can enjoy all of the things that you want. You deserve to enjoy life and feel confident and secure and happy. And you've heard so much valuable information on this show specifically that can help you make your happiness practices simple. But in order to make these practices stick and make them work for you, you must have a calm and peaceful mind. And to that end, I want to offer you a free guided meditation that will bring you into that place of peaceful clarity. Just go to my website, that's LorraineGordon.com, L-O-R-A-N-E-G-O-R-D-O-N.com, and you can obtain that as a download MP3, and you'll also get a copy of my ebook, Visualization, Your Key to Happiness. You see, a quiet, peaceful mind has access to higher wisdom and inspiration. So go ahead and click on the link that says Lorraine's Gifts. And when you subscribe, you're going to get something called My Successful Sunday Starts. And this is inspiration for you every Sunday. I want to thank you once again for listening to this show. Please tell your friends, share it. As you do, you're actually improving your karma. You're helping others to get the information that they may need, the information that can change their life. This is Lorraine Gordon. I'm your online coach. I see you having your best life. The rain wants you to bring need to you see more it too of what you and want. make it a reality. So please and I'll make be back with you next week. Page here. Same time, or same place. You can email Namaste her at Lorraine at LorraineGordon.com. And thank you for listening.